Hey you guys, today I'm going to be showing you a really easy and simple little tutorial video on how to get the Imperator or Romanium or whatever I just butchered that's actually just the title name of the video and also the name you're looking at right in there. Now usually when you do this you can get it done before 1941 if you do it just perfectly, which I'm going to show you guys how to do starting now. So first things first, you're going to set up a few theaters. You're going to set up with all of the troops in Italy first. You're just going to put them on a little simple fallback line in the mountains. Then you're going to grab all of the mountaineers and tanks and throw them in with the general you have that has the most soft attack bonus, which is right here. The skill for attack, that's what you want. Then you're going to put them on the field marshal that also has the most attack as well. You're going to go up here, click on your country flag, go to occupied territories. You're going to make sure to go and put everything on civilian oversight. This way you can get a lot of rifles and guns to help your army because you're going to need those to invade France and the UK. Next, you're going to go into your production tab and pretty much copy what I have. You're just going to delete everything else except for guns and support equipment because you start out with a 100% efficiency or not 100%, but you start out at the full cap that you can get at the beginning of the game. That way you can have a ton of support equipment and rifles coming in so you won't really lose a lot. Next you're going to delete all of your air force except for the planes in Ethiopia and then you're going to deploy all of your tactical bombers because you're going to need to take out Ethiopia very quickly for this to work. Next what you're going to do is put the rest of your troops that are inside of Ethiopia on one front line here. The ones that start here you're just going to do a simple front line there. And then the ones in the south, you're again going to do a simple little front line. They're probably going to get in circle, but eh, that's okay. As for your focuses, most of the time people want to just start doing a focus right off the bat. Do not do that. Make sure you do no focus. Do not use your political power for anything yet until I tell you guys in just a moment what to do with it. Next, for your navy, doesn't really matter, but I go ahead and just throw them all together anyway. And that's pretty much it. You're going to go ahead and start taking out Ethiopia until you're able to have about 30 to 40 political powers somewhere in that ballpark. So you're just going to start going through Ethiopia. You're not going to try to general grind it. You are just going to try to kill it as fast as possible. My bad, I actually meant to do this earlier. As soon as you get enough political power, you're going to immediately start justifying a war goal on France. Whenever you're going to justify the war goals throughout this guide, you're going to want to make sure you justify them while you're still at war because while you're at war it cuts the time down by a lot for some reason once you've gotten that first one down you're just going to go ahead and now that you're justifying go down army primacy followed by ethiopian war logistics to be able to get a lot of the factories and the research slot unlocked as for your research i meant to say you want to concentrate on the following you want to concentrate on superior firepower so you can get more soft attack and defense for your units you want to try to go ahead and get this first infantry equipment tech because you're going to be on the defense in France. You're going to want to try to get this construction bonus here for your industry. And then finally, you're going to want to go under engineering and get radio so you can have troops reinforce in the battle. For your construction, you want to use your infrastructure or max out the infrastructure in Tuscany and Latium. So basically the only level eight places you have inside of Italy as well and up here too. Pretty much anywhere that's eight or higher you want to just go ahead and max out and then in those areas build civilian factories since you're going to get some military factories anyway and you'll be able to do this and just build civs a lot quicker now once you've taken out ethiopia it's entirely up to you actually i was wrong about that you need to annex it i believe for the focus or the achievements you need to just go ahead and annex it it's fine Anyway, so now that you've annexed it, you're going to take your troops out of Africa, mostly, aside from a little garrison force, which I'll make in a second here with our little garrison troops here, and here, and just take half of our infantry, well, a little bit less than half, throw them in another troop, and then use these guys to make a front line there against france because they're not going to be in the allies just yet they shouldn't be if you have historical focuses on then you're going to make a fallback line inside of italy up here somewhere and then you're just going to let the game go until your justification on france has finished and you'll be able to go to war with them 
Now, with your first 150 political power, what you're going to want to do is go to your military high command and you're going to get an infantry leader expert. I know that most of the time people are going to recommend to go to war economy or just try to get a uh, political advisor or a uh, uh, backstabber here. But really in the situation since you're going to be at war very quickly, that's going to be your best bet. And then after you've gotten that, your next 150 political power, you're going to want to get this guy. But you're also going to want to make sure you try to keep at least about 50 always kind of sitting in the back so you're going to be able to uh, continuously justify on other countries while you're at war with them. Alright so our justification has just finished against France. So what you're going to do here is you, I'm actually a little bit behind with it, you're going to make one front line under this field marshal up here who's got a lot of bonuses and then you're going to, or correction, this one and then the reason you're going to be doing this is because in this guy's army group you're going to throw your mountaineers in armor divisions because the AI is going to be throwing everything they can at you and you're going to be sitting in the mountains with mountaineers and armor which means you're going to be having a ton of bonuses for defense and really you should just hold there now you're going to do a second fallback line or you're going to do a fallback line with all of the extra infantry divisions you have behind somewhere really close to the front line just back here somewhere so they don't join the combat and that way, if you start to lose a point, you're able to just kind of reinforce it really quick. And actually, I do need to add a few more just because this little tile right here, I noticed. Then you're going to also use your troops there down here in Africa to try to push. Because sometimes AI won't even actually just... They won't even send anything down there sometimes. So anyway, so now you're just going to go to war with them. After you've gone to war with them, next you're going to start justifying on Austria. And see, it's only going to take 30 days. So you're going to send, if you have the extra troops, it's recommended to go ahead and do this. But since it's only going to take a month, I'm going to send more troops up here. And they're going to try to take Austria. So there's that. Now we're going to just hold here, defend as long as we possibly can, and just wait until the AI loses most of their unit strength. Which, you can just keep looking at battles and seeing their strength right here. And once it's down to, say... 30 40 percent like something like this right here maybe a little bit more severe once it starts showing that from most of their divisions that's when you're going to start using these troops to begin pushing against them now here's actually something really important once you've hit a point with the world tension where the uk begins guaranteeing the independence of other countries it's best to kind of just go ahead and cancel the justifications until you've taken france out because once you've taken france out when you have those kind of resources, you'll be able to really quickly take the art territory. All right, now, if you look over here, what I was talking about, you can now see a lot of their troops are really, really hit with a lot of the penalties now in combat. Because they're so undersupplied, they're getting penalties for attacking in terrain, they're getting shore bombardment penalties, and up here, actually, more specifically, their fighting strength is what 45 percent 40 percent in some case actually down here it's even 28 percent so they're pretty much almost out of equipment so right now is a good time to just go ahead and use your little front line and just begin to push but in this case i'm just going to naval invade behind them first and then after they start moving off of the tiles and they lose their entrenchment then i'm going to go ahead and uh, start attacking which i'll show you guys really quick right here as soon as they land by the way it's a little naval invasion tip to help you guys oh i found a friend uh, i might lose some ships actually doing this anyway once they've landed you'll start noticing that they're going to be trying to pull troops back oh they didn't fight me <laughs> anyway uh once you've landed you can go ahead and start attacking because you should be able to either a start moving your troops out in the west or you're going to be able to go north and get a nice little encirclement depending on the units you brought over here so that's pretty cool now after you've finished all of this side of your tree you can go ahead and start either a going down mari nordstrom if you want to start battling the uk navy but you don't really have to do that you instead can start going down the triumph in africa side of the tree and just after that try to save up your political power until you're right about outside of france when you're really close to capping it or uh, outside of Paris, which we're about to be in just a moment. Alright, and as you can see, they have now called France 
into the war. So what you're going to do, because the UK is going to be trying to bring all of their troops home, any of the ships that you have, which is kind of why it's a 50-50 thing, uh, mainly the submarines in this case, you can go ahead and take them, throw them into a totally different task force, go with the uh, convoy raiding guy, but because I don't know which one of them does right now, I'm just going to do this, make convoy raiding groups, and uh, start convoy raiding just outside of the UK because they're going to be trying to bring troops back. Whenever the UK gets involved in the war though is about the time I'm ready to start justifying on Austria. Especially when you're this close to capping Paris. So uh, once you cap Paris I think it's going to be Dunkirk, Calais, those kind of areas next. There you go. And you have Paris now. So you're next going to justify on Austria and start moving the troops in Africa, try to combine going west and east, try to mop up any of the west you can. Then you're gonna send them to the east because they're gonna be going after your oil. Now, here is one thing that really surprises me that not a lot of people really know. Whenever you have your troops here ready to naval invade the UK, you can actually use your submarines since they can go through these little locked areas and you can put them on naval invasion support and that gives you naval superiority as long as there's no other ships to combat them inside of that area. So this gives you naval superiority so now you can invade the UK and once they've launched now you can just start convoy raiding the uh, British troops that are going to be trying to come back to the United Kingdom because you're going to be landing and more than likely unopposed. Yeah, you're going to be landing unopposed because they have their troops all over the place still. Oh! Alright, cool. So, now that you took out the United Kingdom, because Austria joined their faction, right? Because Austria joined the faction that Free France and the United Kingdom in it uh, were both in. Once the final major, which was the United Kingdom, finally fell... Now you're able to get all the territory associated with it. And because you didn't join any of the factions, you literally get the entirety of the allies. You get Canada, uh, France, Africa, every single nation. And that's pretty much the hardest part. So you're going to basically do this in the peace. You're just going to quick pass like a million times because you have no puppets. You're going to take all of the UK. First, you're just going to take all the UK. And this is going to be kind of a little thing here and you're just gonna unclick that and then just click pop it now that way you basically just took the entirety of uh, all the ally territories that uh, they had and just puppeted them over here in that little territory now the reason we're doing that is because this way we're going to be able to take the Navy so if the United States ever decides to uh, end up joining the war we're gonna be able to uh, well, I mean, we can just, you know, do absolutely nothing but just allow the British and uh, French fleet to engage them. So, we got that. So, uh, I guess I'll just take Canada. Uh, British Raj, I guess. Uh, I'll take British Raj. I guess I'll take South Africa and Austria. Mainly South Africa and Austria are the ones you actually need to fully take all states. Uh, there we go. And yeah. Perfect. Alrighty. Now we're going to click in turn because there's uh, I guess we'll satellite British Malaya. Why not? They'll be our puppet. And just like that, it's already looking a bit like uh, Mare Nostrum, you know, at least in my opinion. And your justification on the Belgium and Denmark, or not Belgium and Denmark, but uh, all those countries, is almost done. Because as soon as you go to war with Belgium, they're going to call in any other democratic country that can, aside from the United States, because they're going to be dealing with the historical stuff where they're not going to want to join an often, or um, they're not going to want to join a war until they are personally attacked themselves and as you can see we now have the navies and we have the factories it's not a lot right now available to us but because we're on the civilian oversight we're basically gaining the autonomy in these regions already and after a while they're going to be kind of just siding with us over time
anyway uh once we end up going to war and finish our declaration on the netherlands then we're going to go ahead and justify on belgium switzerland and hungary romania bulgaria greece iraq yugoslavia a couple other ones anyway uh, basically, this is kind of the easy part past this point besides Spain, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it up anyway. Oh, hey, I got you go. Nice. All right, so obviously, who is this? Oh, pop it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take Italian you go now. And we have most of Greece capitulated. And Romania we're about to take out. So I guess next we're going to need... Wait. Okay. Alright, I guess we're going to justify next on this guy. And since Iraq is not at war with us, and uh, I think they're going to be the last one besides Bulgaria... Yeah, I think I broke the game by trying to get this achievement uh, big time. So uh, we're just going to go and start improving relations with the Soviet Union, alright? We're going to try to make them happy so they don't uh, try to murder us. Also, it seems as though we have a ton of surplus rifles that we can start making more divisions with now. Oh. Oh my. Oh yeah, guys, don't worry, it's all good. Just make sure that you have a large front line with them and... Uh, fingers crossed that they won't be able to actually do anything to you and just keep deploying troops. Okay. And then just keep doing this. T. So here's the funny thing, uh, they're my puppet now. <laughs> so I guess now I get to send these 70-ish divisions to Hungary and go in through there. Alright, now that we got a rock, we're gonna go ahead and declare war on them. Then we are going to declare war on Bulgaria and then Hungary and the only two places left after those two that we're gonna need to take out is going to be Nationalist Spain and Portugal, which should be kind of easy, I would think, after we've taken these guys out. Oh, okay. Finally took out Romania. And because Turkey was not a major for some reason, I can now take Romania and Turkey. Yum, 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 yum. All right. Oh, now for the last big one after this guy. That's pretty much all, all the major powers that could do anything. That, ooh, I forgot about the southern part of Africa. You know, it does not even matter at this point. See, the main thing on this game is when you make really good divisions, such as, for example, medium tank divisions and light tank divisions mixed together so you have speed and a lot of other things, also in combination with artillery divisions for a lot of soft attack, and then the light tank divisions, which are just the starting ones, which absolutely terrible, by the way. Then you have my light tank divisions. I don't care about that anymore. Uh, which are these, which are meh, and then the medium tank divisions, which I think are fairly good, especially for Italy to have, uh, how many, like, 20? Not 20, but 5? <laughs> okay, 5 by this time, and then you can just steamroll them like nothing at all, and yeah. I'm not really sure where else they are, though. Hmm. 
All right, and Spain's gone. Gonna take that if you don't mind, video game. Thank you very much. And my next target's gonna be Portugal. And take a rock. Done. Decisions. And realize Roman ambitions. I have clicked it. And now Imperium Romanium. And it, oh dear sweet holy baby Jesus. What is that picture of the Mussolini? Oh my god. Huh. Well, anyway, so hopefully you guys still either way enjoyed this video up to this point anyway. And hopefully it taught you guys a couple ways to kind of meme Hearts of Iron 4 in a way and be able to uh, hopefully have some fun with it and be able to get this achievement fairly easy. It's mostly just comes down to taking France out really early game before they can do anything, then taking out the UK because they should be allies by that time just by naval invading them, and then doing encirclements with your tanks against their infantry units in the tiny areas where they just have one or two divisions. Just use your mountaineers and tanks against them there. Um, prioritize rifles and prioritize uh, after taking out those two. Take Austria, so that way you can prevent going to war with Germany for the longest time and make sure historical AI is on, and that way the United States is not gonna wanna join the game or join the war. They're not going to want to join any of them because of whatever reason, uh, they're at war with Japan, but they're not at war with you. So, again guys, if you enjoyed this video and please i know everybody on youtube says it but please leave a like down below because this took a lot of time and effort to get to this point to help you guys get here so please like that's it i'm not even asking you to do anything else just like the video i'd appreciate it anyway thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time stay awesome